in the topic of medium vessel vasculitis. Here we are discussing about uh, the polyarteritis nodosa, which is also called as classical polyarteritis nodosa, and it is abbreviated as PAM, polyarteritis nodosa, abbreviated as PAM. So this polyarteritis nodosa or classical polyarteritis nodosa is also a systemic necrotizing vasculitis. So it is also a systemic necrotizing vasculitis. Systemic necrotizing vasculitis of medium sized muscular arteries, right? Medium sized, medium sized muscular arteries. But one important point we need to know over here is the polyarteritis nodosa does not involve small vessels like arterioles, venules and capillaries. This is what they asked in the exam too. So does not involve, does not involve small vessels like Small vessels means after the arteries we have arterioles, after the capillaries, after that we have when it does not involve small vessels like arterioles, capillaries, venules. Does not involve all these three, especially it is affecting the medium sized muscular arteries. So it typically involves the vessels of many visceral organs but somehow they spare the pulmonary vessels. So affects arteries of many visceral organs, many visceral organs but remember that spares pulmonary circulation. This is an important characteristic feature of polyarteritis nodosa. It affects majority of the arteries of the visceral organs but sparing the pulmonary circulation is the MCQ point. The pulmonary vessels are not involved in polyarteritis nodosa. Now when you see the histopathology over here, when we try to explain the histopathological finding of polyarteritis nodosa, so th there is a segmental transmural necrotizing segmental transmural necrotizing involvement of the vessel with elastic lamina fragmentation and fibrinoid necrosis necrotizing vasculitis vasculitis with uh, fragmentation fragmentation of elastic lamina I am not uh, calling it as internal elastic lamina because there is a transmural inflammation so entire thickness of the vessel wall is involved there is a reason there will be a fragmentation of both external as well as internal elastic lamina Right? In previous disease, we studied about the fragmentation of only internal elastic lamina. But here, because of the transmural necrotizing vasculitis, in those particular segments, there will be a fragmentation of the elastic lamina. I am not specifically talking about external or internal. Both are affected in such cases. So, fragmentation of both external as well as internal elastic lamina along with fibrinoid necrosis. Fibrinoid necrosis. This is NCQ point. What type of necrosis we will see in polyarteritis nodosa? How the questions can be asked here? Which vessels are spared in polyarteritis nodosa? So your answer should be the vessels of the pulmonary circulation are spared in polyarteritis nodosa. MCQ point. What type of necrosis you will see in the polyarteritis nodosa? Fibrinoid necrosis. What type of inflammation it is? Transmural inflammation. 
necrotizing inflammation segmental involvement there's a reason we will say that segmental transmural necrotizing vasculitis right with fragmentation of elastic lamina both internal as well as external elastic lamina fragmentation will be there this is also an mcq point fibrinoid necrosis can be seen in the affected area of the vessel wall is also one of the important mcq point in this and sometimes they'll ask you is polyarteritis nodosa more commonly associated with they'll give you options polyarteritis nodosa more common in people with hbv infection so associated with hbv infection more commonly associated with mcq question pan polyarteritis nodosa is more commonly associated with hbv infection now when we talk about symptoms non specific constitutional symptoms are the most common manifestations we know what they are but when we talk about musculoskeletal symptoms musculoskeletal symptoms are most common vasculitis related symptoms so in the question what they will ask you is what is the most common vasculitis related symptom in polyarteritis nodosa most common vasculitis related symptom the most common vasculitis related symptom will be musculoskeletal symptoms that is arthritis and myalgia arthritis and myalgia are the most common vasculitis very very important most common vasculitis related symptoms of polyarteritis nodosa are musculoskeletal symptoms that is arthritis as well as myalgia what is the cause of death renal artery involvement is the major cause of death so another important mcq point what is the most common most common cause of death in polyarteritis nodosa so it is the involvement of the renal artery so renal artery involvement renal artery involvement is considered to be the most common cause of death in polyarteritis nodosa and remember that anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies are not seen in polyarteritis nodosa right now another important point we need to know about polyarteritis nodosa is it is the most common cause of mononeuritis multiplex in general if you see the question what is the overall most common cause of mononeuritis multiplex means in india as well as worldwide diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is considered to be the most common cause of mononeuritis multiplex worldwide as well as in india but if you take among vasculitis among all the vascular disorders among vasculitis what is the most common cause of this mononeuritis multiplex means your answer should be polyarteritis nodosa right among vasculitis polyarteritis nodosa is the most common cause of mononeuritis multiplex but if you see the overall like scenario diabetes mellitus is the most common cause of mononeuritis multiplex in india as well as the worldwide right so this is also one of the very very important mcq what you will see over here now how can we distinguish feature of polyarteritis nodosa with other vasculitis lack of pulmonary involvement we can see here sparse pulmonary circulation lack of pulmonary involvement which is the most distinguishing factor of polyarteritis nodosa when compared to wegner's granulomatosis microscopic polyangitis and church strauss syndrome in all these diseases which has the vasculitis in combination with pulmonary symptoms but here in polyarteritis nodosa we do not find any pulmonary symptoms this is one of the important uh, differentiating factor here and also there is no involvement of the small blood vessels like arterioles venules as well as capillaries right 
when compared to other diseases where they may involve small vessels but polyarteritis nodosa will never involve small vessels like arterioles capillaries as well as venules so because of small vessel involvement is not there even though there is a involvement of the renal artery but not glomerular capillaries renal artery involvement may be seen in polyarteritis nodosa but not glomerular capillaries because they are small vessels that is the reason in polyarteritis nodosa there may be a renal involvement but without glomerulonephritis glomerulonephritis is mainly because of involvement of the glomerular capillaries so because glomerular capillaries involvement is not seen in pan renal involvement will be there without glomerulonephritis and other important differentiating factor will be skin involvement whenever you see the vasculitis of uh, skin or vasculitis uh, associated with uh, the skin there will be a purpura right purpura is because of the involvement of the small vessels of the skin because of small vessels of the skin are not involved but cutaneous manifestations are seen so skin involvement without purpura renal involvement without glomerulonephritis spares pulmonary artery circulation not affecting small blood vessels only affecting the medium sized muscular arteries these are the distinguishing features of the polyarteritis nodosa when you compare with other vascular disorders so if you conclude with certain mcq points over here again let me repeat these points once again that the most common vasculitis in the pediatric age group is hsp hanock shonley and purpura iga vasculitis and the most common vasculitis in adults is the joint cell arteritis which is also called as the temporal arteritis and the most common vasculitis causing death in the pediatric group is the kawasaki disease which is also called as kawasaki syndrome due to the involvement of the coronary arteries so this is what we need to know about uh, the polyarteritis nodosa